before I get her to introduce herself, we're going to watch a short video where you will see her. You will buy locate from the videos on the screen now, eh? And to just know a little bit of the work that she do. Can we have the video, please? Thank you. So how is OSC supporting special, the special needs community in our Archdiocese? Okay, at OSC, we provide support to parishes through engaging catechists in creating an integrated space for the person with special needs. There is no new curriculum, but adaptation to the current curriculum based on the needs of the person. So uh, the reason being, every person with special needs is different, and we want to celebrate that. What does it mean for persons with special needs when the community welcomes them? Through our acts of welcoming and acceptance, they can feel loved. Being accepted by the community helps them recognize their self-worth. All of us are unique and have gifts to bring to our community, even for those with special needs. The Mass with Intentions for the Special Needs Community hopes to open hearts, minds and doors to what one family of God looks like with the inclusion of persons with special needs. We hope to build awareness and support structures in the community so that we can encourage them to attend Mass with the rest of the community regularly. In the same way, all of us, though there are many of us, make up one body of in Christ and as different parts, we are joined to one another. Join us at the Mass uh, with intentions to support the persons with special needs and their families. See you there! Okay, thanks all. Thank you. Bye bye. Let's go. No, let's kidding. Let's kidding. Just kidding. Uh, just kidding uh. Uh, thank you so much, Jenny, for being with you uh, this afternoon. And uh, would you kindly share with us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in this work with people with special needs? Okay. Uh, so, um, afternoon, everyone. All right. I'm Jenny. Actually, before I joined OFC, I was a spec educator. Okay, for what's a spec educator? Some of them. Special OFC. We two things. Two <laughs> Catholic Church love our acronyms, huh? <laughs> OFC means not KFC's friend. <laughs> nah, it's Office for Catechesis, okay? That's OFC. And SPED is? Special Education. Yeah. All right. So I was a special education teacher. And uh, actually, uh, when I was in the SPED schools, I was also a HOD, uh, looking at also curriculum, you know, developing curriculum and how to support or integrate the students with special needs into the community. So I actually do work quite a lot with the uh, teachers with the families as well as uh, you know our external uh, partners you know schools mainstream schools and even universities so when they want to do some kind of volunteer work we do provide some kind of training to mm -hmm. help them understand the the students with special needs thank yeah you. thank you Jenny can you just share in that one or two lines right why is it that you you want to do this work so special well, needs and you shared oh. this very with me and I hope you can share this with them okay I joined OFC uh, three years ago. Yeah, so uh, for me, I think uh, it was uh, really uh, very special because actually I started knowing one family and, uh, you know, I attended a NIE course and then uh, the mother told me, oh, my son has uh, Down syndrome and, you know, uh, he is uh, in a sense not actually receiving. So uh, how can he receive? So he was in a so-called like a, a space where they put all the children with special needs together, okay, and uh, they are not attending regular sessions. So that was how I started. And mm. uh, to me, my belief is children with special needs or persons with special needs, they can know God mm. and they can, you know, what, what we really want is we want them to know that God loves them and we want them to also have this relationship with God. Mm. You know, to know how to pray, to know how to have a community. So I think that's really quite important. I think the the words that you shared with me when we when we caught up was that you believe that every child, especially even every child, can experience and learn about Jesus Christ in their own special yes. way. And so that was something that anchored it, isn't it? So mm. um, you know, just a couple of, of lines over there that wanted that I think that you were sharing. Now, um, because you know, we heard a bit of today from like what has happened at St. Mary's as well as from St. Mites. Uh, I understand that you do some work at Nativity. That was one of the places that you start. Would you share with us the origin of how um, you started this work in Nativity Parish? Okay, so after knowing this family and then, uh, you know, um, I'm from Nativity, I decided why not I volunteer with OSC. 
and say that I can help children with special needs. Okay, so so we actually started in 2018. So I then I was just a befriender, you know. I was just a befriender with two children in the press space. They were in the regular session. They were in L2. And one of, one of them is wheelchair bound. The other one has Down syndrome. So uh, I'm really very pleased to say that now they are in level 8. You know, so from the time I started, they actually have moved on to level eight, and next year they are going to be confirmed. But while you know, the while from the time that you know we started uh, bringing children with special needs into nativity, uh, actually at the moment I have eighteen children. Okay, at, uh, some children, some youth, they are at nativity and they are across you know all the different level they are integrated from level one to level eight with the exception of two of them who have high needs so where they have high needs so we need to have a pull out meaning that we might do like one on one or one is to two depending okay uh and and this is what is happening oh. it's Jenny. quite heartening so that's what's ha what has happened already. <laughs> Go back to the ballet. Nah. Ballet, we rewind a bit. We rewind a bit. Nah. Go back to the origin. Because now they hear this, well, how we cannot do it. Nah. Origin. But, but go back to the origin of when it was that one family, that one child you yeah. helped. Yeah. So just started with one. Okay. Uh, so it's just that encounter with that family, you know, and, uh, you know, very important to know what the family wants for their child. It's not what I want. It's what do you want for your child and how can I, you know, serve you? So I think we really, it's really very important uh, to provide that kind of support to families. Just like, you know, we also bring families to mass and we are also there in person to accompany, mm. you know, the, okay. the families. So when I listened to Jenny, eh, it was, so it was started with one child, one family who asked you for help. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. And then it wasn't like the parish priest asked her to do this, you know. <laughs> no. So your story, you go forward or you close where you are now, huh? But it was something that you just you just did on your own initiative. It was her helping a family, one child, and then a few families got together. Yeah. And eventually they actually went to speak with the with No, with they the, register, they register for they a register. session. Then the priest say, Jenny, I think you need to, uh, you know, meet the families and do a bit of assessment. Because actually the children with special needs, they are all different. They are of different ability. What you often see at mass, right? They are running, they are shouting, they are screaming. But many of them are not like that. Many mm. of them actually have mild needs and they can be integrated. But of course, when I first started, the integration that we are looking at is, you know, when they are in catechetical session, they have a befriender. So we give maximum support. But even as we give that maximum support, as time goes by, if the child doesn't need, then we fade, uh, fade off that support. So the same thing we do at mass. So it's, uh, for me, I think it's not important that, uh, or it's not just, okay, uh, just come, you know, just I, I open my door, you just come and, you know, come into session. But the catechist is very stressed because there's nobody to actually, uh, you know, tell the catechist that, oh, the child is participating in this way or that way. There's no one, you know, and there if he's acting up because he has some uh, sensory issue, what will happen is they will say, no, I think it's not possible. I think we cannot, you know, we cannot. So mm. now with the befriender, because at Nativity, many of them, they have a befrienders. Only a few they do not require, then the befriender is not there. So mm. even at Mass, like what I say, at Mass, we need to also accompany the family. But until such time that we feel that the family is okay, we actually fade off. So when I sit, maybe the first time I sit with the family, after a few sessions, I tell you know, the mother, I'm going to sit behind. So we slowly fade off their support. Okay. Yeah. So, this, uh, so it started with one. Where they had 15 families or children, actually it all started with one whom she helped to design some cards that we'll see in a short while. And eventually it kind of grew. The parish priest knew about it. And eventually, yeah. you know, it was a grown-up effort. It wasn't something that the parish as a council or as a priest who thought about it. It was one person who actually kick-started it all. Yeah. So and this, we had a pause, huh? sorry. Huh? I just wanted to show the picture first before <laughs> okay. I forget. Huh? So these are some of the pictures at Mass, in sessions, receiving uh, the sacraments, uh, going for Mass together, the wardens, these are pictures at Nativity Parish. Um, these are some of the befrienders also at Nativity, yeah? Yeah. Um, would, would, you, would you share with us, right? Uh, yeah, like, so I know one of the big challenges, you were sharing me this story about how there was a mother that came up to you and said, hey, thank you for yeah. organizing this because it's the first time. Would you share that story? 
Okay, so um, you know, from the time we started to organize this uh, mass with intention, right? Uh, and uh, what I do is I ask the families to register so that we can look at their needs in uh, in a sense that if they, the child doesn't like to be uh, you know uh, around loudspeakers and all that, we actually look into their needs. Or if the child and uh, like what you see here is uh, there are still families where you know the the person with special need have not attended mass before. And they are coming to mass for the first time, so I think. To Can be, you share what the mother said? So okay, the mom. Share with the them mom. The story. Okay, the mom. Okay, said that. Uh, actually, without because this boy with autism is really very difficult. He beginning when we started, he was going in and out, in and out of the the you know during mass, he was moving in and out because he he just not comfortable with the environment. Then from there, uh, yeah, recently also I think last year. Towards December, he started screaming and shouting. Actually, we don't know what is the reason. And the mother and even the school, they all try to help, try to know why he's doing this. But because of his poor communication, he's not able to express. So it was something inside him that is not able to control, and he started shouting. So the mother was saying, was telling us that uh, without the support from 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 us, right? From we all. Uh, actually, uh, being there for them even at mass, uh, he she think that she couldn't have done it lah. She would have like given up, given up because uh, mm. we also have parishioners. I mean, one or two who don't understand. I know because they don't understand, so they think that hey, why why the mother must struggle so hard? Why not just keep the child at home? You know, mm. actually keeping the child at home is easier. Mm. Yeah, because we also want to attend. And there are instances uh, where, okay, for all of us, when we attend Mass, we know that we will receive communion. Uh, but for this family, halfway, uh, they cannot because the boy cannot. The boy wants to leave. So the mother just looked at me and said, uh, next week, oh, next week we'll try again. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's quite very, uh, I'm very touched, you know, I'm very inspired that despite it being so hard, but the Mother also still want the child to receive, you know, mm. at Mass, yeah, to hear the Word of God, to know how to love Jesus back also at Mass. Yeah, I, I have, 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 have we ever experienced or seen people with special needs in our communities at Eucharist? Where sometimes we're not too sure how to respond and react. So we're going to learn a little bit. Jen is going to share with us some things to be aware of. I remember one of the things that uh, you shared with me was this particular mother and you know, she brought the child first time finally for Mass. And she said, you know, I find, thank you for doing this because it's the first time I brought my child mm. for Mass. And when I asked you, how old was the child? How old was it? How old was he? Okay, we this had... One? This one? I think this one, he's... Uh, okay, he... Okay, the, for... He, he was, I think, about 11 years old. Okay. You know, yeah. Uh... And you had older ones, isn't we it? We have that older came? ones. Yeah. That's why we have adults who so, are not... I remember you shared that one of the mum came out to you and the child was actually a bit older than that. And it's like the first time in 15 or 16 years Yeah, and they then actually go for we, mass. We have many also who have not received their first Holy Communion. And to, if you ask me, it's so hard to, you know, to get them into the catechetical session because they have missed out on so many years. So if we have started early, mm. I think it would have been much yeah. better in that sense. And yeah. I'm glad we're having this conversation now. Again, remember this this conference is to me is meant to expand the, the tents of our hearts. And so while we may not have a particular charism or abilities, you know, to help, but how can we start this conversation in our own parishes? So that families with people with special needs, you know, many a times I remember you saying the parents take turn law. They go for mm. mass, right? They are embarrassed. Now, wh what are some? These are some things that you that you put up in the slides for us, right? That yeah. these are some things that we can be aware of. So what are some of the behaviours that can happen? A person might walk in of mass, out of mass or catechetical sessions, they may scream, shout, cry, demonstrate some sensory regulation movements and require more time to listen and to receive communion. Mm. Right? So these were mm. some things. The other one was understanding people with special needs. Some possible reasons why they are understood, uh, misunderstood. Communication in an atypical way. What is that, eh? What is communication in atypical ways? Okay, uh, the way they communicate uh, when they are frustrated, right? They mm. don't know how to tell you that 
I'm, I'm anxious. There's something that's bothering me. They don't know how to tell, but they will, you know, break out in uh, some behaviors like jumping, standing up, you know. So, so there are those behaviors that you don't understand or mm. I think even running, you know. So, so it can happen, but because they're anxious and they are unable to tell or screaming and shouting, right? Mm. They cannot, yeah. So that's why they, they uh, because of their poor communication, most of the time they are misunderstood, law. Mm. Okay, most of the time they are not. But if you ask me, uh, we actually do have tools to help them, you know, to calm down. We don't, uh, even when we are sitting with the family, we are actually working on some of the things that, you know, can help them if they have autism, they need uh, to have some kind of structure. So they will need to take off, you know, the order, the sequence of the mask to know that they have completed. So this is on the yeah. bottom right, yeah. right? Yeah. And they then actually we use, have a visual card yeah. to guide them through. Mm. Yeah, and then the sequence of the mask picture where they take off. Yeah, you'll be very surprised, you know, if you don't do that, nah, they go toilet, they come back, they miss something, they'll be very frustrated and they insist that they want because it really has happened. Even that putting the money into the love offering back, nah, they have missed it. The mom said, I tried to ask him to put in the donation box, but it didn't work. He still cannot, he must. So mm. what I do is I say, no, mind, I wait. You wait for me, I bring him to the back. Then the warden look at me and say like, Jenny, we counted the money already. <laughs> then I said, huh? Huh? I said, uh, he has autism. La. You just let him put it in the bag. Then after that, take out and put it in the donation box. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. So these are some of the cards, isn't it, that you uh, design? Yes, yes. Okay, I want to show you. Yeah, we actually do use some, some of these cards. But it's actually not enough to tell them to keep quiet because they have intention. We are the ones who don't know what they want. So the next thing I tell them is wait. Okay, you, you have to wait. You Whatever you want to do, please wait. Okay, so we use these cards to, to actually tell them that, yes, you, you, whatever we want, you know, th th this is not the time. So even when we are looking at the so-called the, the sequence of the mask, right, the mother will say, if you want to, because we know he need to drink water one, so he want to fill up his water. So the mother will say, okay, until we finish this part, mm. then you can go. So the child knows that you are giving, you are attending to their so-called their needs because it's, it's not just saying no, but wait, okay? We are tending to your needs. Uh, please, you know, do after this. Yeah, mm. so that's how we uh, help the children to understand, you know? And Thank of course, you. if they are doing very well, right, we also don't forget to Thumbs tell up. them, Thumbs ah. up, good job. Uh. Yeah, I think good, we need, to, I think, I think not just passion is, I think some people normal also we need also. Uh, <laughs> right? Shall we do this in our parishes, right? We just, how's the hospitality minister? Let's go there and just red flag and then like that. Shh. Yeah, okay, that's getting, getting, yeah, cannot, nah. don't, don't do that, okay? Uh, no, yeah, just yeah. say any, uh, later, hey, we learn from new mind, go and, yeah. no, 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 just joking, joking, joke any. Thank you for that. Uh. So yeah. if you want, to find, you want to find out more information afterwards, yeah. Jenny will be there at the booth to show you yeah, some no. of this. Now, uh, we have three minutes left, right? Okay. These are some of the ways that we can be a more welcoming Perish. Yeah, I think uh, the smiling part is very important mm. because even if you ask me, right, when the child is acting up, when he's screaming and shouting, then we're thinking, oh no, <laughs> Jesus, please help us. Then we look at the people in front and the people behind. Mm. How are they feeling? Uh? So at the end of the mass, when they turn around and smile at us, it was so nice. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's all right. So actually parents also need all this. You know, it, it, they also want their children to be good. But just, you know, the mm. child just can't help it. Okay? So uh, so I think we really need the community to, uh, to smile, to be patient with us, give us a bit of time. Because over time, they can settle down. But it, it's not overnight. We also have those uh, even receiving communion after COVID came back, right? It took about six months, you know. Because, you know, they haven't been receiving for mm. so long. So, so parents also very, uh, very uh, so-called uh, happy and they actually tell us, thank you so much for being patient. Thank you, you know, so much for, uh, you know, not giving up on my child. Yeah, so, so I think, yeah. You know, there were, I mean, there, there one, I just want to share one last low light and one hi last highlight, right? Would you share with us, right? Because there were a few low lights, like at Nativity, when you do it at the 9.30 mass, the people, the, the hospitality ministries and the lectors and the choir, they've all been kind of trained or they know that mm -hmm. this is a time where the people with special needs will sit and they actually sit in the front, up front. Yeah. So there's space the reserved for them. Mm -hmm. But during Advent last year, when we didn't have the sessions, right, what happened? Okay, uh, there, I, I mean... You know, the, the pews already reserved, you know, and uh, the thing is there was a, a time when 
when we went in only uh, there were only two pews out of four. They said, oh no, two families, where are they going to sit? So, so the, I think I was really very uh, touched by the warden. They actually, uh, they really protect us and in a sense very protective over us. They tell the people, right, and they say, oh, uh, the, those who are already sitting down, they say, hey, this one reserved for special needs. Then uh, the parishioners say, but we sat down already, nobody stopped us. You know, but this warden, right, he was, she was very nice. She said, uh, it is my fault because I was late. So I also feel very touched that she actually put herself and say, it's me, you know, uh, but we need this space. So uh, then, then uh, what happened was the choir, they, they, they realized, they saw that, hey, uh, <laughs> you know this, we all need the space. So, so, uh, so they invited us to sit with them. Then uh, when uh, this choir member, she was singing, she said, she, after that, she came to me and she said, Jenny, I got a vision, you know. I saw the children with special needs around the choir. Yeah, and uh, we have a, a suggestion for you. Uh, please let your, you know, your, even we can have two pews because usually uh, it's not completely occupied. We can spare two pews for you to, you know, uh, for your special needs, the family, you know, to sit. So, so those are things that really, I think we need everybody, you know, uh, to just uh, provide that kind of support and uh, we need, everybody to be in this together. So like what I say, even, uh, you know, if you want to do something, uh, just uh, whatever you can do, lah, because we are all different and we know our own strength, right? And we know what we can do. So in our little ways, uh, if we can help, then we, we can be a befriender. Lah, all right. If not, uh, just, just being more welcoming in the community, that also makes a difference. And uh, I always say, you must tell your priest, you cannot, you cannot say, I want to do, but you don't go and volunteer yourself. Because without us volunteering ourselves, nobody knows this is what we want to do. So we must say, yes, we volunteer first. But of course, if you need more training, please, uh, you know, uh, contact me. I have my email. Or you can uh, just scan the QR code and say that you want to help in some ways. Then we'll look into how we can provide some kind of training. We really need a lot of befrienders. Without the befrienders, I think, you know, um, at Nativity, right, even the catechetical session, the catechist also will have some problem la, in a sense. And now I'm also reaching out to the youth. I have 13 befrienders. Out of that 13, nine of them are adults. Five are actually our youth. And three of them, they, they have been confirmed uh, last year. So I asked, invite them to come back and help. So, so we must tap on, uh, you know, the resources uh, up there. La, <laughs> yeah. You can feel the passion now when Jenny speaks, right? <laughs> can we just put our hands to really warmly thank Jenny. Thank you so much, Jenny.